Magic Formula Investing is a strategy that was created by the American hedge fund manager and Columbia University professor Joel Greenblatt. The core of the strategy is its formula-driven approach that focuses on buying good companies at favorable prices in order to maximize returns. As one can understand, Greenblatt prefixed the word magic to his formula to improve its marketability, but in numbers and when backtested, his magic portfolio does deliver an annualized return of 23.8% between 1998 and 2009, which was far higher than S&P 500's 9.6% CAGR. Now, Greenblatt didn't stop with just creating a formula, but he actually puts it together as a strategy whose details can be read in his famous book, The Little Book That Beats the Market. In the process of developing his magic formula, Greenblatt analyzed a large universe of US listed companies, and he was particularly looking for businesses with a large earnings yield and a high return on capital. We'll understand more on this in the next section, but remember the core focus of the magic formula is in finding companies that are both cheap and good. Let's start with how the magic formula finds cheap companies. Now for this, Greenblatt uses the ratio of the company's operating earnings to the enterprise value, which he labels as the earnings yield. These two financial metrics can be easily found in the profit and loss statement and the balance sheet of the company, although enterprise value will require a quick calculation on your part, which is nothing but the summation of the company's market cap and debt after subtracting the cash in the business. Greenblatt's earnings yield is a representation of a company's cheapness and as you might have expected, the higher the earnings yield, the cheaper is that company. Now when it comes to identifying good companies, Greenblatt prefers using the return on capital metric. The return on capital or the ROC of a company is calculated as its operating earnings or EBIT divided by the sum of the net working capital and the company's depreciation adjusted value of fixed assets. In essence, the ROC is a proxy for business quality as companies that are more efficient users of capital also tend to have a better brand, a superior product, a unique business model and a wider economic moat. So on one hand, the magic formula uses the earnings yield which quantifies how cheap the company is. And on the other hand, it utilizes the company's return on capital, which quantifies the efficiency and the quality of the business. Now the Joel Greenblatt magic formula investing strategy is a set of nine rules. The first three rules are conditions, that is the minimum market cap and excluded sectors and geographies. Most significantly, the strategy excludes financial companies and while the book doesn't give us a reason for this exclusion, we think this is more to do with a financial company's unique business model and its heavy use of leverage. Steps four and five are where we plug in the earnings yield and the return of capital as per the calculations we had done earlier in this video. Now, of course, a criteria like a minimum market cap of $100 million is pertaining to the US markets, and it's a little outdated, which means you have to define your own criteria for Indian stocks, which might mean a minimum of 500 crores or 1,000 crores, etc. But these five steps here are like the essential raw materials, or might I say the magic portions of the magic formula investing process. This brings us to step six, which is about allocating a rank for each company on the basis of their earnings yield and their return on capital. To illustrate, let's say we have a small universe of 10 stocks whose earnings yield and return on capital has been already computed. The next step is to rank the values and then to add up the numbers for us to receive the total score. For instance, stock F is ranked number one as per its earnings yield and its ROC, which means one plus one gives the stock a score of two. Now, understandably, companies which have a low total score are better positioned in terms of cheapness and quality of business. And so the final step is to sort this table on the basis of the total score, which gives us company F, company J, company B, so on and so forth as our preferred list of companies to invest into. If this part is clear, we come to step seven and in a method similar to what we just did, Greenblatt's strategy requires investing into 20 to 30 of the highest ranked companies. 
He goes on to suggest that these stocks should be accumulated on a progressive basis, that is, invest into six to seven companies every three months over a 12 month period. Step eight of the strategy requires investors to rebalance their portfolio once a year. And since there is some taxation involved, the ideal approach here is to sell the portfolio's loser stocks in the 51st week after purchase so that one can book a short term capital loss and subsequently sell the portfolio's winners in the 53rd week after the purchase. This way, the magic formula strategy requires investors to book profits once a year and use the proceeds to repeat the seven steps that we learned in the earlier section. And the final step, step nine, is to persist with this approach over a period of at least five years to derive maximum benefits under this strategy. So these were the nine steps towards implementing your own magic formula investing strategy. And while what I just showed you was the Joel Greenblatt version, most practitioners do tweak some parts of the strategy to suit their own learnings, investing style and market conditions. When Joel Greenblatt backtested his magic formula for the 16 year period between 1988 and 2004, the results he received were truly remarkable. In numbers, the magic portfolio had just one down year and delivered a CAGR of 30.8% as against a 12.4% annual return for the S&P 500. And it is on account of this performance that practitioners and researchers all around the world got busy verifying and even improving Greenblatt's formula. For instance, there was a favorable study in 2009 in the Nordic countries which concluded that while the formula worked, it worked even better with some simple tweaks to the formula. Similarly, there were studies in Brazil, Hong Kong, China and the US market that supported the magic formula's utility in delivering results above the benchmark. In fact, in June of 2020, an independent scholar named Robert Andrew Martin published a backtested analysis done from 2003 to 2015, which found a 3% overperformance for the magic formula. In that study, Martin also found that while the magic formula overperformed the S&P 500 index, it did that at a higher volatility than the index, which I thought was a bit surprising. Of course, one test result can be different from the other as a lot of it depends on the stocks one buys, the frequency of the purchase, the rebalancing period, etc. And although most investors could not replicate Greenblatt's high returns, they still yielded positive results with most experts agreeing that the magic formula investing strategy does have some legs and it does outperform the indices. Many Indian websites feature stocks that subscribe to the magic formula. Some of these lists are free of cost while others require a subscription. But in all fairness, creating your own list is just a matter of spending a Sunday afternoon with any stock screener website. And so that's what we did. We applied the magic formula approach to Indian stocks, did some tweaking like setting a minimum market cap condition of 1000 crores, etc. And came up with these stocks which are listed not necessarily in the order of ranking, but includes the earnings yield and the return on capital for your reference. Notice here that while we applied the magic formula to a list of over 1000 companies, a large part of the selection landed on chemical companies that includes commodity, agro and specialty chemicals, construction and engineering companies, iron and steel and metal companies, oil and gas, some packaging companies and also some pharmaceutical companies. Actually, India has a lot of pharma companies and honestly, we found a few of them in the selection and also a few of them in the rejection bucket, which really didn't surprise us. And speaking about sectors that did not make our cut, we have the cement companies, FMCG companies, which has to be on account of their low earnings yield. Then we have the IT companies, paper, textiles, auto parts, etc. Now remember this is a moving list because valuations and profitability is a dynamic number and they keep changing with the mood in the market and the cyclicity factors of that business. There are many options through which one can invest per the contours of the magic formula investing strategy. 
The first option is the do-it-yourself way and we've already discussed the core aspect of it in this video with those nine steps. Now it's just a matter of you putting in an afternoon and identifying the right set of stocks and ideally with some tweaks like market cap, cyclicity, industry prospect etc. you can improve your stock selection. The second option is to utilize the list of magic formula stocks that's available in websites like Value Research Online, Screener.in, Equity Master etc. Some of these websites offer this list free of cost, while some charge a fee for it. So do check that out and also figure out how the list has performed on a historical basis. And a third option to investing in the magic formula set of stocks is via a platform like Smallcase or Wealthdesk. These platforms offer a curated basket of these stocks, but they come at a cost which is somewhere around 1000 rupees per month. Now, in my opinion, the magic formula is a clear strategy and is easy enough to be done by any individual who's curious to learn about it. Joel Greenblatt's book can be a wonderful starting point and you can always follow that up with tons of information that's available on the internet. And with this, we come to the end of this video. I sincerely hope you learned something new today and if yes, do help us out by tapping on to that like button and sharing this video with your WhatsApp groups. Once again, thank you for your time and I look forward to catching up with you next week on another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.